So if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that we've written quite a few analyses and made several videos for 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms for both comedic purposes and not. And my goodness, have we had a good time butchering Ye Hua and Bai Jian, especially Ye Hua. However, lately, thanks to this guy and his 60 episodes of being the most perfect Wattpad boyfriend, my appreciation for Ye Hua just multiplied exponentially, and by the time I saw Tiu Chen and Ling Xi walking beautifully into retirement, preparing for a lifetime of staring at one another, I was ready to watch Ye Hua's eye-poking scene again with pleasure. And maybe it's about time I said a few nice things about him, so here we are with this video. So before we begin, let me be clear that from an entertainment point of view, I enjoyed both Ye Hua and Tiu Chen, but for very different reasons. Ye Hua is a character who, through Mark Chow's acting, brought something new to a world of tropes and cliches, and Tiu Chen, well, he has Zhang Zhen's face, and that's good enough in this case. But putting aside the actor's talent, the character's similarities, and the amount of IQ they are said to have but never seem to use, Ye Hua's appeal has a lot to do with his mistakes and failures. As a matter of fact, they are the best things about him. Unless you imagine yourself to be the person whose eyes he digs out. To evaluate Ye Hua's actions in a different light, it's helpful to go back to his history and note that he grows up in an abusive household. Bad parenting, bad fashion. So when he encounters and falls in love with Bai Xian in the human world, he views her not as a partner, but as the very first thing that belongs to him. And he ultimately treats her the same way he is treated at home without knowing it. <laughs> Now, Ye Hua and Tiu Chen's actions are very similar in this part of their stories. In the human world, they both lie to the female leads, for instance. They both make up an identity in order to be with the female leads. While our perfect Tiu Chen's reason for everything that happens in this mortal land arc is that he simply can't hold it in around Lin Xi, there is more to Ye Hua's underlying motive, something he's probably not even aware of. He wants to escape his own identity once and for all. Then comes his plan to elope. Not only does Ye Hua want to be with Bai Tian, he also desperately wants to run away away from his own life, hence the reckless execution, the failure to communicate, and the series of mistakes that come after. His actions are crappy, but is his reasoning justified? Definitely, if you look at him as a 20-something year old who is smart but without practical experience and has a crush on someone for the first time in his life. If you were a citizen of this fantasy universe, is it better to put your life in the hands of Ye Hua or Tiu Chen? I'd say you'd be taking the same risk either way. A middle-aged guy who can't control himself for a short period of time while the whole world's safety is at stake, and an adolescent who barely knows what he's doing. But different from Tiu Chen, Ye Hua is never sold to the audience as an established leader by default. He's not the best strategist there is with his less play dead plan, and the drama doesn't pretend that he is, they let him fail. In Ye Hua's head, it's completely okay to annihilate the whole kingdom so he can be with Bai Tian a little sooner. Now, while he reasons that this war is the last useful thing he would like to do for the world as the crown prince, we all know that the world could live without this terrible idea. So consequently, he fails and keeps failing until the breaking point. Viewers' opinions are pretty divided about Bai Tian's treatment towards Ye Hua in the end. Some of us believe that she has no brains and is incapable of understanding what Ye Hua has done for her. The rest of us think Ye Hua hasn't suffered enough and should have been left in the rain for another month. Objectively, I side with the latter group because this protest from Bai Tian benefits both of their characters. Yes, Bai Tian's jealousy is irrational and irritating, but frankly speaking, rationality, logic, and emotional intelligence aren't really Bai Tian's things. Why her kingdom is still in one piece is beyond my comprehension, but the point is, her discontent with Ye Hua's lies and her fierce reaction are exactly the consequences Ye Hua needs to face for his flaws to be validated. Because while Ye Hua's sacrifices throughout the drama look like they're done for Bai Tian's sake, most of his decisions are not made on any basis other than his own need to undo the damage caused by his mistakes and to feel better about himself. After all, when does Ye Hua ever ask Bai Tian what she wants? Ye Hua and Bai Tian's relationship is far from being that epic once-in-a-lifetime romance is made out to be, but at the end of the day, I do believe they should stay together because, first of all, for world peace. I mean, if a mass destructive bell has to explode every time they want to talk to each other, then we need them to be together, okay? Secondly, all things considered, only Ye Hua can tolerate Bai Tian and only Bai Tian can put up with Ye Hua. He is reckless, immature, somewhat selfish, and pretty oblivious to the emotional states of others. His character is romance-focused and lacking in almost every other aspect, but the train wreck of his failures demonstrate his flaws. His constant fear of Bai Tian's judgment and her response to him can be taken as proof that those flaws are recognized but not glorified. 